So I thought I would explain some things to you. I've noticed that when I stay on the bike, dogs like to run out into the road at me. I think being on the bike causes them to perceive me as being another dog. And me being on the bike certainly causes their chase instinct to kick in. As you will see. So please keep watching. I think you will learn a lot during this video. So please watch the whole video. Keep in mind that due to cell phone drivers, drunk speed, etc., you cannot rely on people to stop in time if you start moving about erratically in the road. Plus, you could cause someone to have to veer around you and cause a traffic incident if you move about erratically in the road. Do you notice the wind coming out of the west? Did you see the flags blowing about? Even with their design, they would have blown some other way were the wind not coming from the west. This is why I say to never use pepper spray or pepper gel. Because in many instances like this one, the spray and even the gel many times can and will blow back on you. I've had the gel blow back toward me before. Pepper balls are also a bad choice. The pepper and tear gas cloud will blow back on you. I've had this happen before. The balls can also break in the chamber as they have a clamshell design. I've had this happen before too. This is why I recommend only kinetic projectiles when something like a beer launcher or, or bullets when non-lethal looks risky. Keep in mind that many unforeseen things can happen during a defensive event. I find that the most rapid and surefire solution tends to be the best. Erratic movement in the roadway can be lethal. Both of you and others. If you move erratically and a car swerves to go around you, that could cause a horrible traffic incident. So I generally recommend that you get off the bike when you see an unrestrained dog. Especially as getting off the bike many times will call the chase instinct of the dog. Getting off the bike also prevents lane wandering while distracted or while dodging the dog. Getting off the bike also allows you to use the bike as a shield and makes it easier to protect the area toward the rear of the bike. I should also note that pepper gel rarely hits the dog when you use it. The dog tends to dodge it and the wind tends to blow it about. When you see me looking to my left side like this, it's me looking in my mirror to monitor the traffic toward my rear. The mirror is mounted on my glasses. I would also like to note here that you should not do what other people do just because they do it or tell you to do it. Most people are dumb, ignorant, and insane. No, I'm not joking. Jimmy Dunn jumped off the bridge logic can get you hurt or killed and even cause a traffic incident. Especially as many people say to just stay on the bike and run, which I personally think that they aren't really that dumb, but instead just statistic knowing full well the foolishness of what they recommend. Everyone knows you aren't supposed to run for predatory animals as it only excites the prey drive, otherwise known as the chase instinct. When confronted with a predatory animal, you are supposed to back away slowly, everyone knows this. And don't have the gall to think that you can outrun the dog, as you will see I cannot even outrun a dachshund. Keep in mind that even if you are a fast cyclist, most dogs can run between 30 and 45 miles per hour. Even if you can outrun them, if you make a mistake, for example, if another dog comes out ahead of you and knocks you down, or if you end up lane wandering into the oncoming lane, you can get both yourself or others hurt or killed, especially if lane wandering causes a traffic incident. You have an obligation to get off the bike to avoid lane wandering and erratic movement especially as getting off the bike as soon as you notice the unrestrained dog would and many times does quell the chase instinct of the dog and avoids the problem entirely. Notice again that the flags are blowing toward the east so pepper spray slash gel slash balls would have been a terrible idea. 
Keep in mind that you're on a roadway, not a racetrack. The roadway is not a place to be veering all over the road trying to dodge the dog or lane wandering while distracted by the dog. Even with rural roads, there are still people that drive quite fastly, I might add, down those roads. And you can look away from the road and end up lane wandering, especially while dodging the dog. And the next moment, you're in the oncoming lane with someone else headed toward you, which I personally have had happen to me. So get off the bike when you see an unrestrained dog that might at all get into the road. As this incident starts, you will notice that I was looking toward my left to look into my mirror, but I did not notice the dog until it was out in the road and getting at me. I did not expect this on a busy road. Kicking this dog in the head multiple times did not work, and hesitating could have gotten me crushed, or the child might have run out into the road after the dog, and potentially many other things could have happened, so this needed to be ended rapidly. Although I must admit that I did not notice the child until I watched the video. I find that I cannot pedal while kicking a dog in the head. This is why it should be a serious crime to have an unrestrained or poorly restrained dog anywhere near a roadway, and it should be a crime to have any dog near a busy road. The parents would be the guilty party in this case. This is why you should practice what I call defensive cycling. If I had been able to notice the dog sooner and get off the bike before its chase instinct kicked in, the dog may not have gotten into the road at all. Oh, by the way, I've had pepper gel on my leg before. I can't recall how it got there, though, whether it blew back on me or if I got it on my hand and then it got on my leg. But it does illustrate another issue with pepper gel. What if it gets on my hand and then when I am not paying attention, I rub my eye? That could be a problem. Oh, another thing to be cautious of when dealing with dogs getting into the road is sunset. Even with bright tail lights, you might not be well seen at this time of day. Erratic movements during sunset can therefore be particularly dangerous as they could easily cause a traffic incident. Keep in mind that I had spent five hours riding into a very strong headwind that had just died down at this point. Uh, 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 uh. No? Notice that the dog came into the road even though I was on the bike. It's therefore obvious that staying on the bike is of no benefit when dealing with dogs. Keep in mind that I cannot even outrun a dachshund. Keep in mind also that Rottweilers are actually very fast, just below the Doberman level of speed. It is always important to keep the dog from getting into the road if possible, especially during sunset and sunrise. There are many dangerous things that can happen once the dog gets into the road. If you start any erratic movement in the road, such as from dodging a dog, or if you veer into the oncoming lane, such as while you are distracted from the road or dodging the dog, then a severe traffic incident could occur. Also, keep in mind that most maulings are done by sweet, loving family dogs that wouldn't hurt a fly. In fact, the number one complaint I have seen from victims is that the owner said that the dog doesn't bite. Keep in mind that a dog is always a weapon, whether it's owner's weapon or its own weapon. Also, always take barking seriously. The dog is not joking when it barks. I know this from my own foolishness in not taking barking seriously. So you can see here that getting off the bike and putting the bike between me and this dog disarmed this situation completely. It would have charged at me like the previous two dogs had I not gotten off the bike. And with a dog this powerful, that would have been horribly dangerous. Hey! Uh-uh! 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 No! As you can see, getting off the bike and backing away slowly is very effective at disarming the situation. Notice the angry man honking at me. There is always unnoticed traffic in the road. So, as I have been saying, 
get off the bike. And in this video, you will see the same thing. Getting off the bike completely disarms the situation. No, you get stupid. Notice how the no, dog starts up. barking again as soon as I get back on the bike. Being on the bike clearly agitates the dog. So when you see an unrestrained dog, get off the bike. I purposely left some redundancy in this video because I figured you wouldn't be paying full attention. Run. Running only excites the prey drive. I like to be educated. But I'm so frustrated. I like to Thank you for watching. Mess. Please comment, I like, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I dedicate this video to all of you lying sociopath sacks of trash that keep telling me to stay on the bike when dealing with dogs. A bit of advice, don't cause someone a problem and then tell them how to deal with it. Your dog never should have been unrestrained in the first place. Keep in mind that if anyone gets bitten or knocked down by your dogs, you will be liable for it both criminally and civilly. Thanks to my methods, I have never been bitten. Without my methods, I would have been dead by now. The Rottweiler incident that you just saw alone would have killed me had I not defended myself. <laughs>